Hi there, today I have to glue my rackets, I have to put on new rubbers, so I thought this would be a good time, as good as time as any, to answer a question that is asked to me uh, the most, which is, what material do I play with? And this video will just consist of two main parts. First of all is, uh, I won't tell you what material I play with, and I will explain why. And I will explain why you shouldn't listen to me and take advice from me f as to what material you should play with. The second part of the video will be me explaining to you what kind of rubbers you should take or should use. So I know it's a bit contradictory, but uh, I think it will all become clear if you just stick until the end. But I, it's really annoying to me, at least, at least to me, that this hyper fixation on material and on equipment from a lot of people, a lot of amateur people to be honest, when it shouldn't be the focus at all. And I think there are a lot of reasons why it shouldn't be a main focus. First of all, if you're wealthy if you have a lot of access to new materials then okay good for you then you can test out a lot of things at once even that is the case not the case with me but that's that's the case with me because i'm sponsored so whenever i was trying out new rubbers or trying out a new blade what would happen is that i just order at my sponsor a few different test rackets different test rubbers i'd glue them on and i'd play with them for a few sessions to see which one i'd prefer and then I'd stick with that. A lot of people I'm aware of that don't have this privilege. So if you have this idea, this this thinking of, oh, I need to change this and I heard it through the grapevine that this rubber is better because it's faster or it's harder or it has more control or more rotation, then you're going to continuously change your materials, continuously change your rubbers and never get a, a proper feeling with that rubber you've been playing with at the beginning. It might have been the case that you should just needed to test things out a little bit and you didn't give yourself the chance to just take it easy get the feeling get the rhythm of it right and instead you were just hopping from one rubber to the next so that is very bad and i know that again a lot of people they just try one rubber at a time so they don't have this money even to continuously test or test all at once test, test simultaneously so that's why i think first of all why you shouldn't Oh, hyperfixate, hyperfixate on trying to find the ideal rubber and trying to continuously change. Second of all is because, as a lot of people might not know, is that when pro players, the, the materials they play with, they come from the sponsor, but they're also not factory made. They're not the materials that lie in the stores available for the general public, but instead they're, they're, they're made up to the personal preference of the player. Which was the case with me, so my rubbers, now, uh, now not anymore, excuse me, because I, again, I don't play professionally anymore, so the, the stuff I get sent is the more general mainstream stuff, which is also available in uh, table tennis shops. But professional players, if somebody tells you, oh, I play with this, I play with that, just know that you're not going to find that particular rubber that particular blade in the store okay rackets maybe not so much but uh, rubbers for sure because the, it's fact it's not factory made it's custom made it's harder usually it has like let's say f four or five more degrees than a regular rubber in the store would so for example a lot of players they play with uh, 55 degrees in forehand uh, 55 degrees on the esn scale if you don't know it's uh, just a hardness scale the hardness of the of the rubber and 55 i don't think you'll find that anywhere anywhere and let's say even i played with a 50 degrees rubber on my back end for a long time i still do but that rubber even if it's commercially available it's not the same as you would find in a store it's not the same 50 degrees so that's another reason why you shouldn't just take my advice because i cannot you cannot get the same stuff that i'm getting so you won't get the same sensation and also everybody has a personal preference as a personal feeling has personal needs so why would i lecture you on what rubbers or what material to play with or why would you go in discussion with somebody or go in a lengthy discussion at least because of course it's not unbeneficial to to sometimes talk about yeah what you're what you're feeling or what you're observing but why would you take the advice of somebody else in consideration too much at least if it's you who, who is supposed to to be feeling what what is right for him or for her yeah and i'm not going to be able to to explain you that just because i'm a better player than you or i i might be a better player or somebody else who you're taking advice from is a better player than you yeah, he's, he's not going to find the right solution for you just because he has a level above you or, or two. And what's even funnier, in my opinion, is that a lot of players don't play with the blades that they're 
advocating that they're promoting. I think that is maybe sort of a yeah a trade secret, I suppose. But uh, if you just pay close attention, a lot of players, it may sound hypocritical, but I'm not this case, okay? So I just play with a grip because I prefer it. But a lot of people who play with a grip or something around the handle of their racket, it is to cover up something. It is to cover up the fact that they're not playing with the racket they're supposed to be playing with, or that they're not playing with the brand they're supposed to be playing with even. And even if the handle on the racket says that they're playing with something, a lot of times that's just the handle that's been glued on. Underneath is the blade of a different brand, something which they prefer to play with. Yeah, that, that's another reason. I know a lot of players, I'm not going to call to, to, to say any names, of course, because uh, I'm not a jerk, but a lot of players uh, are doing this, and let's say even, even if they're commercially invested in this, that is obviously a very good reason as to why they would cover up the fact that they're playing with something else. So don't take this too seriously. Don't take this too seriously and yeah, don't don't listen to, to everything that's that's been preached. And maybe another thing is just that of course for brands it's very beneficial that a lot of people play with a lot of different rubbers. Meaning that if you get your rubbers from or, or your blade or anything from a local supplier I think it's common financial or economical logic that if you buy something in large amounts you get a discount on that the price per piece is going to be much lower than if you were to just buy a few pieces individually meaning that the markup the profits that stores get on the rubbers that they buy in bigger numbers it's going to be much higher and here lies the problem because that's one of the reasons why I'm very much against these colored rubbers. I, I, I really don't like them. Not just because I feel it's, it's a bit of a mockery of the sport. Somebody playing with a pink rubber or, or whatever. Because to me it just looks a bit stupid. But okay, you do you, of course. It's just my, my own opinion. But not only that, but let's say you have a rubber. You have a Tanner G05 rubber. I don't think Butterfly produces them in different colors, but I, let's just say, for the sake of argument, that they do. They have a Tenor G05 rubbers in two different, two different colors originally, black, red. Of those two, uh, two different colors, they have three different thicknesses, 1.7, 1.9 and max thickness. So that means there are already six rubbers of that. Includes in that three or four more colors with different thicknesses. I mean. <laughs> just the division, the complete fragmentation of, of all those different rubbers makes it that you cannot stock up as a as a smaller as a smaller shop as a as a smaller table tennis store. You cannot stock up in large amounts on rubbers, and the profit for the bigger brands that will stay the same because yeah they will just sell their rubbers their smaller amounts at higher prices. But the table tennis stores they can't make a lot of money on those rubbers and not only that just logistically it's i think a real pain in the uh so if you should appreciate the services that uh your table tennis shop does for you let's say if you really want to do them a favor then don't do anything special don't do anything special just buy a regular rubber normal color also maybe one last argument is that if you look at the tour and the material that everybody's playing with, everybody's playing with the same. Everybody's playing with the same, especially nowadays. Forehand, let's say 85% of them are playing with some sort of tacky, sticky rubber on the forehand side. And the backhand side is usually, let's say, t -Bar has the Evolution series. Butterfly used to have the Tenergy series. I think maybe they're a little bit out of style now. But Andro has Rassant. Or Asanter, Donik has these blue fire, blue storms, whatever. So everybody's playing with <laughs> with the same rubber basically, and there are just very minor differences in between players. That means that all these forums, all these online debates about these, uh, let's say, lower grade rubbers, about all these small differences. Again, here comes the same problem of of scale and of stocking in in, in larger amounts that if you take into, into consideration all these different kinds of rubbers, they're made for amateurs who like to talk about this kind of stuff and who like to feel that their level is going to be upgraded so much if they play with a rubber that is just a tad bit faster or has a tad bit more control. And I think on that level you can do a lot more to improve your game 
apart from just playing with different stuff, playing with different material. I think there are a lot of other improvements to be made before you go looking at your rubbers or you go looking at your racket. So that's why I'm not such a big fan of all this fragmentation and all this talk because again, I don't know what you want to play with. I cannot give you advice on that. The person who can give you the most advice on that or the best advice on that is your, your local table tennis salesman, your supplier, because they have the most knowledge of what the rubbers, yeah, what they what they contain, what, what, what qualities they have. So I think you should, at least that's my advice to you, not care too much, not care too much about what other people are saying. And you could try, continuously try asking me what rubbers I'm playing with and I will continuously not answer you. Not because I'm impolite, just because out of principle I'm against this, yeah, again, this, this over fixation on material when other things are, are to be done and you can just play <laughs> with, with whatever and you would still find other ways to improve except on your materials, on your rubbers. But now, second part of the video, I'm going to talk about what material should be best for you, or at least what material should not be best for you. And I think it's basically very straightforward. A lot of people overcomplicate stuff. A lot of people overcomplicate stuff. And I think what you should just use as a sort of baseline is that I think the audience that I'm reaching with my channel doesn't have the level that's necessary to use these tacky rubbers in foreign, such as the Chinese national team made popular with uh, the DHS Hurricanes, uh, Hurricane series. Now, as a lot of you might know, other brands have copied that and have their own version of a sort of tacky rubber, which is made to absorb some rotation so that counter spins and stuff are made to be easier. The problem with that is a lot of people don't have the timing, don't have the necessary rhythm to yeah play that ball correctly. To play that ball correctly, meaning that because the rubber is a bit stickier, the ball stays in your racket a bit longer. And a lot of people, they don't accelerate enough to get a proper feeling out of this rubber. So instead what would happen is they will play, the ball stays in their racket for five seconds, ball will drop in the net. On top of that, on the lower levels, you're not, a lot of people won't just play counter spin all the time. More cases, they will block, they will block a lot. And those rubbers, those rubbers with a with the tacky top sides, so to say. They're not made for blocking. That's why you almost never see somebody play with cert with those rubbers on their backhand side. They will never do that. Again, the same reason, because in backhand, your swing is shorter, so you can't accelerate as much. And backhand is more often than forehand used for blocking. So that's why, just in general, I, f I think it's a good rubber for me. For me, or people around my level, or starting from... A certain level but I think club players and stuff not trying to, sh to sound arrogant I just think it's not for them because I've been around some people in practice and <laughs> you, you immediately see what the problem is when somebody has a lack of rhythm or yeah just a lack of regularity in their rallies in practice and that is again just because they don't get this feeling right and they think that these these tacky rubbers are, are sort of this uh, all problem solver and i think that's not the case and what is also very bad about those forehand rubbers that are so tacky is they just wear out so quickly and i think a lot of people of of you they might have noticed the cost of a rubber the price which has risen a fair amount uh in 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 belgium at least let's say the the top rubbers of a brand they're easily 60 euros so if they wear out so quickly then why as an amateur player or as a as a, a hobby player without sound, uh, trying to sound uh, demeaning why use something that is not durable at all that you have to change very rapidly very rapidly because you know these spots those those marks on the rubbers that you tr you you see the the pimples that show underneath i think in in those tacky rubbers i can i can see those after one session already so <laughs> that's another reason just don't use them, just don't buy them. Not because I think it's a bad product, just because I think it's not fitted for you in this particular context. So I just say, get yourself a regular rubber on forehand side. And the same on backhand side. And just start out with a thinner rubber or a rubber that is a bit, a bit slower, has a bit more control. And as you improve, as you think that you should play with something faster, move up to a faster rubber, move up to a rubber that is a bit thicker. 
up to yeah max thickness of course just because that gives more speed to the rubber and the same goes with rackets basically the same goes with rackets meaning that you start with a fairly slow for for uh, attack players at least and you start with fairly slow a uh, blade, an all wood blade, of course, and from there on you go to a faster all wood blade. You might go, you might switch up to a carbon blade, and uh, not even the fastest one. And and from there on you go faster and faster until you think you're done for. I think that's a very easy process that shouldn't be overcomplicated. Just start with something a bit slower, with a bit more control, and move up, go faster without <laughs> trying to find out twenty or trying to test out 20 different rubbers. I think that was the video. I hope I don't sort of sound like I came, I come from an, uh, an ivory tower because I know I'm fully aware that all my rubbers I got were, were free and that whenever I needed to test something, I got multiple variations. I got multiple rubbers, I got a few that I could test out all at the same time and I know a lot of people don't have this privilege. Uh, just let me know maybe because I think it's a discussion worth having that's why I made this video just let me know what what your thoughts are or why you think you'd like to know so much about about certain players rubbers when a lot of it is a bit concealed the the truth is a little bit warped so let me know what you think about it and uh, thanks for watching and hopefully this was of some value to you and hopefully I will see you next time